is this, the ultimate hot end. Well, probably not, but its successor might be. What it is, is probably the world's first six input multi-material hot end. The problem with most mixing hot ends or uh, multi-input single output is that the uh, all the filaments are held at the same temperature so you can't really print multiple materials with a mixing hot end unless those materials happen to have the same temperature characteristics until today uh, because this one will do that I haven't tried it but in theory I could print say polycarbonate at 320 degrees with the other uh, one or more of the other filaments being PLA and hold that PLA at 170 degrees and the other thing that happens if you just print PLA with a mixing hot end is that it will um, hydrolyze over time it becomes more and more runny because it's held normally at print temperature but with this I can hold PLA at a much lower temperature so the filaments that aren't being used won't hydrolyze at least so badly if at all or to put it another way I could have six different filaments with vastly different print temperatures from polycarbonate to PLA and I can switch between them I could do a multi-part print um, using six completely different filaments in theory I haven't tried it all with the same hot end uh, and without the need to load or unload any filaments or do any tool changing or anything like that so does it replace a tool changer hmm. Hmm. maybe <laughs> but as with any mixing hot end um, I can print at really high flow rates because I've got effectively six melt chambers fed by six extruders I set the mixing ratio to use all six filaments which you could do because I've got a separate heater so the, this block can be lower than that block but it counts at the same temperature or pretty much anywhere in between so if you feed six filaments through six melt chambers each one will travel at one sixth of the speed that a single filament would do so each one spends six times longer in the melt chamber you get a seriously high melt rate So this is kind of moving on from my last video that I did. Um, so I've remade this combining block um, so that it's now got its own heater and thermistor. Um, I tried to do it in the same footprint so all the other parts I didn't have to remake them so it's a bit tricky to do. So we have the, the hot section which will take any, any nozzle any M6 threaded nozzle could be brass, metal, coated, whatever you want and then the heat break and then the combining block where the six filaments come in and meet up at a separate point so two heat zones so any filaments in the combining block can be at one temperature and the one that's going all the way through and then melting in the hot block can be at considerably different temperature the heaters are held basically with a, a screw that end and this end 
that stops them from falling out that way and then the same thing on the other side a screw in the middle that stops them falling out the other way so the cartridges aren't being crushed or anything like that heat brakes as I've said before six heat brakes um, in a liquid liquid cooling block so six inputs and then coolant in coolant out um, that's the kinematic mount and that's the end stop that's a heat brake that's another heat brake spot the difference that is what happens when you use high temperature thread lock on a heat brake like that and then try and unscrew it because that point there has been undercut so that this will screw all the way in but because it's undercut it's effectively another heat brake the wall thickness of that is only 0.5 mil so when I tried to take these out three of them broke and end up like that so I had to make new heat brakes and um, I, I tried to get some more heat brakes made but for whatever reason that didn't happen so I ended up having to make them myself um, which is why this video is, uh, has been so long and forthcoming since the last one so I kind of redesigned them so that they don't have that undercut there anymore and that thread is longer so they'll still screw in and bottom out which is what they need to do so it might not be the ultimate hot end um, but its successor might be anyway let's um, have a look at some of the uh, testing I've been doing so I started out by just heating the hot end the hot block at the bottom a bit with the nozzle in it um, which is the red line in the graph um, and it says hot end <laughs> And then the um, the combining block I called mixer, so that's the green line on the graph. Um, I started at 185 degrees because that's what I normally print PLA at. Uh, mixing hot ends um, seem to work best with the temperature at the lower end of what manufacturers say. I don't know why, probably because it's a, a big melt chamber. So I started heating this at uh, 1619. You can see how slowly the... Um, the combining block um, heats up because it's just um, uh, the heat's got to find its way through the heat break so second chart we're about 1635 and it's still rising sort of slowly and then in the um, third chart we see it's stabilized and it was 133.5 1639 so it takes 20 minutes um, for it to fully reach the temperature that's going to do um, this is just in still air um, so obviously with no no heating and on the combining block it's so we've got about 52 degrees temperature difference uh, so without any cooling fan or whatever that's what it would run at the uh, any filament held in the combining block would be at 133 uh, which as you can see is significantly lower than 185 but it takes 20 minutes um, to get up to temperature if we go back to chart one uh, you can see how slowly it rises even uh, sort of 10 minutes it's um, up to 128 so obviously I don't want to wait 10 or 15 minutes before I can print um, so that's the reason for the second heater so what I envisage happening is that that would come on uh, whatever temperature I decide say 140 and then the heater would be thermostatically controlled around that temperature. The heat brake itself will prevent it from getting any hotter than that. Uh, so the heater is there just to um, initially heat the combining block and thereafter it will be heated by conduction through the heat brake. Those graphs are only showing um, tools 6, um, six seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, I actually hit set the temperature on tool zero, which is you can see here. Uh, so I set the active temperature to 185 for the hot end and zero for the mixer. Uh, because all tools share the same heaters, um, then the temperature is that you see for 
six, seven, and eight, and whatever is the same. Uh, so then I uh, just whack the temperature up to 200 degrees um, because maybe if the um, if the filaments are at a cooler temperature in the combining block well, I might need to increase the nozzle temperature so I put it up to 200 just to see what the combining block would then run at. You can see in this graph it's a very sharp increase for the hot end straight up to 200 degrees and a very very gradual increase for the mixer which eventually got up to about 143 so about 57 degrees difference um, so those heat brakes are uh, PTFE lined because I found before with uh, when the filament is at um, all at print temperature you do get heat creep through the filament itself regardless of how good the heat brake is at the top and uh, because PLA has a low glass transition temperature around 60 degrees C, um, then it can swell and block the heat break regardless of how efficient the heat break is. So uh, I found that having PTFE liners was necessary. However, if I run the combining block at a lower temperature, it might not be necessary to run PTFE liners. But assuming it is still necessary, then um, the maximum I want to run the combining block at would be around about 200 degrees um, to to protect the PTFE um, although some people say you can go to 220 but assuming we have a maximum of 200 degrees then I thought what I wanted to know what temperature I could run the hot end at whilst keeping the combining block or those PTFE liners effectively less than 200 and so you can see from here that um, I can run it at 275 degrees um, and that gives me a, a maximum temperature at the top of the combining block of 194.5 call it 195 so that's 80 degrees difference so then uh, but that was all always all just with um, free air so then I wondered what would happen if I actually um, blew some cooling air over the combining block um, so I got a little 40mm fan and just wedged it in the carriage not properly mounted or anything and not properly directed and with no baffles to prevent cooling air getting onto the hot end part uh, just blowing some air over the combining block as well as I could and then repeated the test at 185 and you can see here um, we got up to about about 90 degrees eventually so with a bit of cooling air over it um, 185 it could the combining block could be as low as 90 which is 95 degrees difference in temperature I did a quick test um, running the fan at 50% speed um, and it went up to 102 so it's fairly sensitive to, to fan speed obviously I could refine that further that's just a, a fan wedged into the carriage not very well directed um, no fins or anything on the combining block so there's all sorts of things I could do there to improve that if I wanted to and then finally I wanted to know what um, temperature I could print the nozzle at and still have the combining block or those PTFE liners less than 200 degrees um, so I just kept ramping up the temperature I got up to 295 degrees for the hot end that's as hot as I could go uh, because it's the air that was being blown at the combining block, um, quite a bit of that was being deflected to the hot end below, um, which was limiting the temperature. So ideally some sort of baffles or, or, or have the air better directed um, would help that. But anyway, you can see from there that um, I got up to 295 degrees to the hot end and the combining block, I renamed it at this point from mixer to combining block, um, was at 150 or 149 point call it 150 so it's 145 degrees difference in temperature uh, with some air blowing over that block so you could see that I could probably get up to 350 degrees C on the hot end and still be less than 200 degrees C for the combining block so here we are another day another shirt I've got six of these by the way it's not the same one um, so I've done some more testing and established 
um, the lowest temperatures that I can use for uh, a number of different filaments in the combining block. But I'm conscious of the fact that this is getting quite a long video now, so I'll, I'll make a separate video about that and publish it in a, in a, in a week or so's time. So I just, I just wanted to finish up with a bit of an appeal. Um, so this iteration of this hot end would be expensive to make and um, would only appeal to a very small number of people. Uh, for one thing, you've got to buy six extruders, so... Uh, there aren't many um, there aren't many crazy people like me that would be um, willing to do that but it might be that maybe a two three or four input version that allowed you to print parts with two three or four different filaments uh, might be viable but i'm too old to start another business it's not something that i would want to do um, but it could be that what i'm working on here might help other people but here's the thing uh, since I retired now I've, I've only got my pension income so um, funds are very 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 tight now it is possible to monetize YouTube videos for that to happen you have to have at least a thousand subscribers which I've got but you have to have 4,000 viewing hours a year and currently I only get about half of that so if the work that I'm doing is of interest or you think it might be to others, anything you can do to get my viewing hours up would mean that I could maybe start getting a small income from Google, which I could then use to fund the tooling and materials and so forth that I need to carry on this um, development work. So I'm not looking to make a fortune or anything like that, but if I can um, get a small income from the work that I'm doing, it will help fund further work. So if you, anything you can do, if you like or share this video, uh, will help. So uh, until next time. Thanks.